Thank you, Madam Speaker. Colleagues, if you're anything like me, you don't have much time to be watching TV, especially around about now um, with build deadlines. But I made an exception this week for last week tonight with John Oliver. Um, Sunday's episode of that show was all about mobile homes, which many of you know is an issue that is near and dear to my heart um, because I have about 2,500 mobile home parks, mobile homes cited in parks in my district, uh, which is second only to Representative Marsh, who has over 3,000. So it was a little surreal to hear John Oliver talk about this issue that I've been working on for the past few years. He summed it up like this. Around a third of mobile home dwellers own their homes but don't own the land underneath it because they live in mobile home parks and pay rent on that land to the park owner. It can cost thousands of dollars to move mobile homes if you can move them at all. That's why 80% of mobile homes never move. In recent years, large investors have been snatching those parks up and either tearing them down or ratcheting up rents and fees. The lack of mobility for tenants is part of the attraction for big investors. According to one new report, over 100,000 sites traditionally run by mom and pop businesses are now run by private equity firms. Make no mistake, colleagues, this trend is happening right here in Oregon. John Oliver goes on to show clips of Frank Rolf, a mobile home park investor and operator who gives classes geared toward park owners and potential park owners. Mr. Rolf is quoted as saying, what I've found, and again, just as a heartless person, is that the customers are stuck there. They can't afford to move the trailer. They don't have three grand. So the only way they can object to your rent raise is to walk off and leave the trailer, in which case it becomes abandoned property and you recycle it, put another person in it. So the question is, how high do you want to go? In a different course, Rolf says, one of the big drivers to making money is the ability to increase the rent. If we didn't have them hostage, if they weren't stuck in those homes in the mobile home lots, it would be a whole different picture. As I've mentioned, this is a big issue for my constituents, especially for seniors on fixed incomes. Mobile home parks are not a true free market, so it's appropriate for the government to step in and protect consumers by playing a regulatory role. I think Mr. Rolf's quotes show that this is, in fact, exactly the type of situation where government regulation is appropriate. John Oliver mentions right of first refusal for tenants to purchase their park as a possible solution. Oregon has a great nonprofit, Casa of Oregon, that helps tenant co-ops purchase their parks. But we don't yet have right of first refusal, and Casa needs more funding and support. There's a bill on Ways and Means right now, HB 2896, that would do just that, as well as a number of other bills related to mobile home parks this session. I appreciate the spotlight that last week tonight shown on this issue, and colleagues, I urge you to watch the segment so that when we vote on mobile home park bills, you have some idea of what many of my constituents, and I expect many of yours, are going through. Thank you, Madam Speaker.